Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for What Culture Gaming, and today we are going to talk about video game pre-orders, and possibly not in the way that you might expect. As we all know, the pre-ordering of a game in this day and age is somewhat of a risky business. I mean, not only do most games seem to launch in a less than perfect state, which actively seems to punish those who got in at the ground floor, but with the myriad of bundles, special editions, and of course, day one DLC, it can be almost impossible to play the full game without remortgaging your bloody house. And if we're being completely honest, <laughs> a lot of special editions are just full to the brim with utter tat, which leaves me with more statues, coins, and maps than my shelves can even deal with. Honestly, my girlfriend thinks that I'm a bloody hoarder because of working in this industry. And you know what, she's right, I've not seen her for weeks since she went into the forest of a thousand steelbook cases. God, I miss her. Anyway, today we're not actually going to criticise these over-the-top collections, but instead sift through them to showcase the ones that were actually worth pre-ordering, because at its core, this is something that can benefit players as well as publisher pockets. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game pre-orders that were actually awesome. Number 10. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts Okay, so I will state this clearly. I do not like Nuts and Bolts. I think it was rushed, empty, and an altogether hollow experience. It was a title that unfortunately was changed heavily from its original idea as being a remake of the beloved N64 classic, but thanks to pressuring by Microsoft to refresh the series, it meant that we got... vehicles. Good. However, that doesn't mean that the pre-order for this wasn't something actually quite brilliant. Back in 2008, if you pre-ordered this bird and bear bonanza, you would not only get this shiny new game, remember at the time that this was a big reason to get excited in the first place, but you also got a code for the N64 original. Oh yes, indeed. And the best thing was is that this code was delivered immediately, meaning that you could play the original while waiting for the new installment. What a perfect way for newcomers to the series to be rewarded for their curiosity with one of gaming's finest 3D platformers. Shame about the game that it was marketing though, really. Number 9. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Steam Edition it's no secret the appreciation that developer CD Projekt Red has for their fanbase, and the love that the fanbase has for this charming publisher. And so it was of little surprise that when the pre-order bonuses were announced for PC gamers of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, they went above and beyond. Steam users were granted access to a digital art book, soundtrack, and world map, amongst a plethora of other perks and goodies. The latter is a great addition, by the way, because the continent that plays host to the happenings of The Witcher 3 was a sight to behold from towering and influential cities to lowly trading posts, all connected by rich, detailed world lore and wrapped in a sense of adventure that only a few titles managed to accomplish. And so this map that many would throw away if it was printed out was actually really useful and it had annotations and points of interest all over it. Plus the soundtrack is exceptional and honestly is something that you have to listen to, because it just allowed you to treat even a trip to Tesco's as some sort of mythical quest. I'm saying that though, some of the people who shop there in Gateshead, they do look a little bit like they're out of folklore and legend. Bog monster in R4 if you catch my drift. Anyway, while many pre-orders lazily throw a couple of exclusive weapons and XP boosts your way and send you out into the wilderness, CD Projekt Red provided a smorgasbord of exciting extras, all serving to enhance the already amazing experience. Number 8. Infamous Second Son – GameStop Italy Aside from the woefully underwhelming knack and the relatively mediocre Killzone Shadow Falls, Sucker Punch's infamous Second Son was to be the PlayStation 4's first big hit. Playing as edgy punk rock kid Delsin Rowe, the player is granted a vibrant Seattle Washington playground and a whole host of new abilities to experiment with. There is simply no way that zipping across the map using smoke, video, and neon powers could ever disappoint, so naturally those who were counting down the days to release were happy to reserve it ahead of time. And you know where this is going? Wait, no you don't, because this pre-order was absolutely bananas. PS4 owners in Italy were in for a right surprise when their copy arrived in March 2014, as the pre-order bonus that they were greeted with was two cans of energy drink and a pack of glow-in-the-dark condoms. That's right, some liquid to put the spunk in your spine and some condoms to put your spunk in… well, you get the idea. Honestly, the only reason that this is on this list is because it's so off the wall and you have to laugh at how misguided and strange the message behind this is. Still, at least you can go longer and play safe. Good times, I guess? 
Number 7. Resident Evil 3 Best Buy I'm not going to pass up an opportunity to bang on about Resident Evil no matter how small, and when you look at the offerings of Resident Evil 3's pre-order, you might question whether I've lost my bloody mind. The answer is yes, long ago, my friends, but also, come on, why would you not want to play in Jill Valentine's classic Resi 3 outfit, or not want to give Carlos his original hairstyle? Okay, listen, I'll level with you. This is a tongue-in-cheek list to begin with, and I am as bold as a clam, so I'm going to fascinate myself with any and all hairstyles that I can. Plus, I think that this is more of a case of why wouldn't you want to pre-order this? If it's anything like the Resi 2 remake, this is going to be amazing, and the free multiplayer inclusion makes this all the better. And doing all of this with hair and a classic outfit, mm, sign me up. Number 6. Sonic Colors In the years where the Wii reigned supreme in households around the world, Mario's greatest rival Sonic capitalized on the system's success with a smattering of new games of his own. One such game was 2010's Sonic Colors, a fresh take on the series' is, 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 is otherwise pretty tired gameplay mechanics. Colors added a plethora of unique abilities to give the blue blur some much-needed development. But the problem was is that Colors launched at the end of the Wii's life cycle, so the Sega team had to get creative in order to get people to stick around and pre-order their game. Their decision was a ridiculous hat. Now, I'm a man who loves a good hat. I mean, just check my previous comments about clams and boldness, so this absolutely hilarious headpiece was just a whole lot of yes to me. It is utter tat at the end of the day, but you have to see that this isn't about the quality nor the practicality, but about the inherent comedy potential. Rocking up to any situation with this dome on is sure to break the ice. In fact, if you have this hat, if you have this hat at home, please tweet a picture of it to me, you in that you in that stupid hat, to Retro J with a zero, and let's spread some stupid Sonic love. Number 5. South Park The Fractured But Whole TV and film licensed games have got a pretty spotty history at best, but with the excellent South Park The Stick of Truth arriving on home consoles in March 2014, it was clear the tide was beginning to turn. Designed as a turn-based RPG but stubbornly remaining loyal to the show's 2D visuals, The Stick of Truth and The Fractured But Whole both served as excellent introductions to the setting and characters while also providing a barrage of fan service to those who have stuck by the show through its 20-year air. Time. The Fractured But Whole was officially unveiled at E3 2015 and looked to continue the chaos, this time mimicking and satirizing the media and public's infatuation with superheroes. And the best thing was is that if you pre-ordered this brilliant sequel and hadn't played the original, that you'd actually get the first game absolutely free. Not a bad deal at all, seeing as both games were made with clear love and respect for the franchise. Number 4. Shovel Knight Okay, so while Shovel Knight's stretch goals for its Kickstarter aren't really the same as a direct pre-order, you simply can't ignore the value that this game gives you. Plus, I love Scott Tailford here on the What Culture Gaming channel, and I feel that I should speak at length about a game that he's told everyone and their nan's dog that they should buy. Not only do you get the absolutely outstanding base game, which is ripe with classic 2D platforming joy, but if you supported this project, you get every expansion for free. And this wasn't your run-of-the-mill, more-of-the-same adventure. These were three completely separate experiences that changed up the play style dramatically. Those who kickstarted the project ahead of time were granted access to these awesome pieces of content for a price that we can all agree with absolutely nothing. And you know what the best part was? It was that you showed your support where it mattered at the very beginning and were now reaping the rewards. Plague Knight would be proud. Number 3. Mirror's Edge Game While there have been a collection of first-person parkour titles released since, it was 2008's Mirror's Edge that brought the genre to the masses. We've seen parkour's fluidity achieved in games like Assassin's Creed and Dying Light, but DICE's adventure surely served as some kind of inspiration for Ubisoft and Techland respectively. Being the first game in a new IP, there were no guarantees of success, especially given that the new generations of consoles were promising a vast number of exciting new titles to play with. Success was to be earned far prior to the release, and the inclusion of a perk for pre-ordering was definitely a smart move. Gamers in the UK who reserved a copy of Mirror's Edge at their local game were rewarded with a limited edition t-shirt by skate brand Fenchurch. The white shirt featured protagonist Faith depicted in an edgy pose with her red shoes on, seemingly inspired by the game's simple yet effective colour palette. The shirt's striking design and respected brand name meant that those who pre-ordered Mirror's Edge could strut around knowing their love for the video game is approved by this swanky designer brand. 
Number 2. Catherine The team behind Dungeon Crawler slash Dating Sim Persona took a break from social links and teen angst in 2011 to deliver Catherine, a twisted tale of flings and flirting as protagonist Vincent navigates the dangerous waters of, well, having an affair like a cheeky little whippet. Keep it in your pants, mate. Catherine's narrative, not unlike the Persona series, does a wonderful job of fusing the relatively normal with a pinch of the supernatural, and its provocative tone elicited a puzzled, yet intrigued response from gamers that decided to give the title a shot. But you know where this is going. It's time to talk about the Love is Over edition, because alongside the 36-page art book, the soundtrack on CD, a fetching pair of polka dot boxer shorts, you got a pillow with one of the game's romance options on the front. That's right, a love pillow. Oh boy. Now, Catherine is rated M for mature, so sensible gamers that abide by the Lord need not worry about any puzzling looks from parents when they clutch onto this pillow, but still, it's definitely not one that I have on my sofa at home. No. And number one, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Cast your mind back to 2002. Girls Aloud, Sound of the Underground, reigns supreme in the UK Top 40. Spielberg's crime film Catch Me If You Can dominated the box office, and gamers across the globe were salivating at the thought of a new entry into the esteemed Legend of Zelda series. Link's latest adventure, The Wind Waker, had him taking to the sea to hop from island to island in an epic quest to defeat the evil Ganondorf once and for all. The tale is as old as time. Well, 1986 to be specific about it. It. But what if I told you that if you pre-ordered this game, you would actually get two more free Legend of Zelda games for doing so? That is right, you got the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Master Quest and the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask with pre-orders. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's such good value. Both N64 entries are considered to be the peak of the series, so gifting gamers the opportunity to revisit the pair was sure, sure to forge loyal customers for years to come. And they were bloody right. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game pre-orders that were actually awesome. I hope that you enjoyed this very silly list, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. But before you go, I hope that you have a fantastic day, whatever you are getting up to. Some big love from me to you. I hope that you go out there and absolutely smash whatever you set your mind to, because you, my friend, deserve love, happiness, and success. We all do. And if you're struggling to achieve those three tentpole goals, then do not worry, because we all have times where the lull hits pretty hard, be they emotionally, be they physically, it can happen to the best of us. But just remember, you're not alone in this. You can speak to people if you have problems. Start a dialogue. I know it's hard sometimes, but friends, family, and professionals in the support industry, all of us care about you and want you to do well. So go out there and smash it, you big ledge. As always, I've been Jules, and go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And if you want to do something a bit extra, then why not swing by my board game channel, Live and Let's Dice. As always, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.